Priyanka Ragadia, and thanks for tuning in to Deconstructing Chatbots. Today's episode is a special one because I have invited Anu Shivastav from our Cloud ML team. Hey Anu, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm really excited to be here and share some things about integrating Google Chat with Dialogflow. Well, awesome. Let's dive in. We know that Dialogflow is a natural language understanding platform that helps us design and integrate conversational experiences for mobile, web, phone, and lots of other things. And Google Chat is an intelligent messaging app within G Suite built for teams to make it easy to have one or more threaded communications in a virtual room. Right, so it also has a third-party platform, an SDK for bot integrations, and that's what I'm excited to, to be talking to you about today. Well, cool. What are some of the benefits of bots in Google Chat? So if I'm a user, um, I don't really want to have to install an app um, for every task that I have to do. So that's, you know, installing apps for mobile or desktop. You can just do some of your workflows and automations in a chat room by direct messaging a bot with an at mention to get started. Right. So if I wanted to chat with you normally when I chat, right, I would just say at Anu and, and your name would pop up and then I would start typing whatever I want to ask you. Um, so it seems like that's exactly what you do with, with bots. You just type at the name of the bot. And if you don't remember the name, it'll just populate a list of names and then you can select from it, which is awesome. Yeah, so to make it easy with bots, you can kind of treat bots as you would humans in the chat room. And then now you have this uh, team memory in the chat. Awesome. Well, yeah, so as a developer, how do I get started in setting up bots in Google Chat? So let's take an example. Today, we'll use a use case that comes from our sales team. Our story actually starts in a sheet. Google is a large company, and it's hard to know who the right person is to contact. Our sales accounts are grouped into clusters, and each cluster has uh, accounts. And then within those accounts, we have account managers and engineers that specialize in skills like security and networking. So it gets really complicated to figure out who the right person is to ping when you get a question, even within your department. So we have lots of spreadsheets like this used by the sales team. I have a copy of one of these sheets from one of the European teams. I have scrubbed out their names and test accounts. Uh, these are This is test data. And instead of actual customers listed, we have, uh, we're have we using some Google products. But the setup of the sheet is the exact same. Currently, say if I'm a sales rep and I have a question about who is responsible for this particular piece of information, I would come to this sheet and look for my answers, right? Right. So for example, let's say I get a question like, who can advise on security best practices for the YouTube account? First, I would want to find the engineer in that cluster and then figure out who is on security. Or maybe I actually need to connect to someone who knows the account info, so I would connect to the account manager. Let's say, you know, I need networking for analytics, then I would check here. Well, this works fine, but if you're on the go um, and you're just looking for this information, you really don't want to look for a street sheet URL and then uh, and then try and find that information within it because it, that can be too hard. Right, and it would be great if I could just get this information in chat. Most likely, what I'm going to do next is open a chat tab to talk to whoever I find in the sheet. And that's where the spot comes in. I don't want to have to Oh, open a new tab and wait for it to load. Reducing context switching is a key point in using bots. Right, and then <laughs> slow Chrome tabs when I have thousands of them open. Right. <laughs> that would be cool, but this sheet looks pretty complicated. How are we going to be able to extract all this information um, into things that we need? I'm glad you asked. So we'll actually be using the Sheets API. And you're right, this is pretty complicated. It's designed for human consumption. It's you know, it's not really a database, but we can work around that. So to uh, answer a query, we need to know three pieces of information. Number one, the account name, so we can get the cluster. Number two, the specialty. And last but not least, the role type. Oh, I see where this is going, right? In in Usually when you create uh, bots or chat applications, you need the pieces of information that act as your input. So in this case, these three pieces of information become your input to the bot. Exactly. So I could write a basic bot that expects these three inputs in a certain order, but it would be unnatural 
and difficult to use. As a user, I'd have to remember the exact order and I'd always have to spell everything right, which I definitely don't do. And we know that with technology, if it's too hard to use, people aren't going to use it. So this is where Dialogflow comes in. Yep, and that is what Dialogflow is great at doing because it's powered with natural language understanding and it helps understand uh, normal human words and it's okay to make mistakes, it's okay to ask, um, you know, not in order sometimes and it would still be able to understand what you're saying. Yes, so I'm gonna show this to you in reverse. Let's take a look at the bot and then we'll break it down on how we built it. So let's do a couple test queries. Say I want to know who is on GVEL for data management. Great, and now we see the follow-up intent because you need one more piece of information. Awesome. So now let's actually break it down. First, we need to define the entities, then we'll make the intents, and then we'll implement fulfillment to make this all work. Well, if you've watched previous episodes of this series, these concepts should be familiar. But if not, then the playlist is linked below. Go check them out. Step one, defining the entities. Let's look at the specialties that we have in this table, which will group together similar words. I can define the synonyms and enable fuzzy matching to be generous with the input. Meaning, if I make a typo, which I definitely will, it will still connect to the same entity. The synonyms are really key to making the system robust. Right, and say in this case, if, you're, if you look down into G Suite, uh, we can see that they're all grouped together like docs and Gmail. So now let's define the intents. The intent is a category of what the user is asking for, their intentions. So you always wanna have a welcome intent and it's best practice to give the user some instructions on how to interact with your bot. So when I first add the bot to this room, this is where the response comes from. And then now we wanna know what happens with those intents uh, or when those intents are triggered. So the actions and the parameters for those intents. Right. So we've defined the intent, look up Googler. So this is where all the good stuff goes. Let's go ahead and put those entities into this intent. They are all required for this intent to be fulfilled. If a user forgets one of them, I define a prompt to get it from the user, as we saw earlier. So if they forget a piece of information, they'll see this prompting question. Got it. So if they forget in, in our example use case, right, they forgot the account. So um, they see the question to, to input the account information. Yep. Cool, okay, so what if they're, like different people talk differently, so they will ask the question in a different way. Um, how do I train the bot so that all these examples are incorporated? So that's where step four comes in, training phrases. In my opinion, this is the fun part. Dialogflow uses a pre-trained model, but we can add our own specific questions for this bot. So I've added these as training data, and you can see that it'll detect the parameters I just told it about. So once we put all that information into the training phrases, how do we actually know that it's all working? How can we test this? So in the console, you can actually test it out um, exactly how it would work on Google Assistant. So I know that we're building ours for G Suite, but I will touch on how you can support multiple platforms just right out of the box in a bit. Now let's see how this actually connects to the backend. In this case, the, sheet, the Sheets API, right? So um, we would have to go and create a webhook. How do we do that? Great, yeah, let me just go ahead and show you step five, the fulfillment code. So we can look at this Node.js code, which is um, using those libraries we're talking about. So like the Sheets API, the Chat API, all of these in the, uh, the package, which has all of these libraries. Now, how can we add the images and buttons and other types of widgets if they are needed for the interaction to work? Yeah, this is how we make it really rich. Uh, we just construct these with JSON, how we want the chat cards to look, and then push it to the Dialogflow agent. We want to make this work with Google Chat, so how do we make that integration? So here, in the integration section, Chat is actually enabled by default, but let's say I wanted it to work with multiple platforms, I could just select some of the other boxes in this section. So it's that simple. It was really just a click of the button to actually enable it once we got the bot to work. 
This has been awesome, Anu. Thank you so much for showing how it's done. For anyone who wants to try this out, Anu has the code up on GitHub, which we have linked below. And if you'd like to dive deeper or have any questions, leave us a comment or tweet at us. Bye. Bye.